when I was running for for chairmanship, when I was contested, and and we were getting close to the primaries, and it requires. I mean, I was spending a lot of money, and most of the Christian brothers would come around me and say, "Ah, brother George, we are praying for you. We are praying for you. We are praying for you." So it got to a point. I started telling them. I said, "Stop praying for me. I have prayed. I'm not just spending prayers. I am spending money." The church needs to realize that the politics where we find ourselves in today, it's money driven, and not just in Nigeria. You go to America. I mean, you 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 see the hundreds of millions of dollars that goes yeah. into a candidate presidential election. So it's it's not just peculiar to us alone. A presidential system of government of election is expensive, but the church. It's about the system. The system itself it's, is expensive. It is expensive, but the church haven't seen reason why they must also begin to contribute money and to raise special offerings for people running for office. And again, I take it back. It's the theology. For the past thirty years, we've been taught how to give sacrificial offering, prophet offering, project offering, this seed, that seed. But we've not been taught that. When it comes to electoral time, we should also give. But I've also seen some churches in the past election, 2019 specifically. I mean, I had some pastors say it categorically from their pulpit: "If your friend, your brother in church is running for office, and you believe in what he stands for, put money in his campaign." And for me, that I was really glad when I had that from the pulpit, which shows that the church is beginning to realize that. To run effectively the presidential system of government, either at the federal, state, local level, whatever office you're running for, you need money, and it's better that it's people around you that contribute, so that you don't sell your soul, so that when you get to office, you haven't compromised the process of getting there. So it's good that that reality is beginning to dawn on dawn on us, and I believe that as we mature. Year in, year out, political cycle in, political cycle out. That awareness we get deeper, and it will get to a point whereby a Christian candidate would say, "I'm running for senatorial, whatever," and an offering will be raised in a service on a Sunday morning for that particular candidate. I'm waiting to see that day, and we're getting closer to that. I mean, uh, I, if I, if you allow me to put a bit of points in there, I mean. Uh, what we call politics, or what we call showing interest in politics, um, it's a product of elite consensus, um, and something that we have to put in our mind. It's not, you know, in, in, in societies like even in the US, and most people look at you in an environment, they look at you in a, con- in a community because of your active participation, because of your active involvement, and they have a belief and some some feeling that. A perfect majority can represent us well. So there's there's a consensus backing you up. You no, know, it's all fortunate that people wake up in Nigeria and say, I want to run for office. But there's a sense of, of communal thinking that says, this is the person that can do well for us if he gets the office. Even because without power, he or she has been doing well. So they're willing to go with you all the way with their resources, with their own physical um, strength and every single thing that has to do with them. You want to go all the way to make sure that you are able to get there. That's why you find, you know, we've copied, if you look at the US, where we copy this whole presidential, this expensive presidential system. I mean, because in the UK, all you need to run for is you need to run for is your only your your, your primary constituency, which is equivalent maybe to local councils in Nigeria. That's all you are running for to be a member of parliament. But in Nigeria, it's just, it's, 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 it's the opposite. You're running with a, you're a governor or a chairman or you're, you're a president. You're running the entire mandate of the country. And it becomes extremely expensive in that regard. And so when you see politicians, they do, the traditional politicians, they sell their houses, they take all, everything in there. But we as Christians must also be able to go all the way down that that people want to run for offices in, in, that we know. A hundred thousand, a twenty thousand, a fifty thousand. It happens in the US. You see people say, I'm a Democrat. And everybody say, chip in. Pay something in, and people are paying ten dollars, twenty dollars. They have agreed to say, we will t- "I will take five dollars from my account every single month as my own commitment to this candidate because I believe in his vision, in his values." And when he gets there, I'm not hoping that he's going to appoint me. 
I'm going to step in as to my role as a citizen and hold them accountable. That's the way democracy is supposed to work. That's how the political processes works. But people are look politics like, oh, he's, he's, he's well is well to do. You know, he has much money and it's overflowing. And he's trying to do some charity in it and he's trying to cook it. I'm sorry. No, that's one of that was just one of the fundamentals. You know, that are really on that that destroyed that's destroyed our political culture and our political system. When we want when we want to change Nigeria, especially as a middle class in Nigeria, because I don't I don't think the guys at the top, you know, the upper class guys, there is no incentive for those who are enjoying the staff, there's no incentive for them to change the system. There is not. You know, the system works the way it is, so they want to go on with it. It's a middle class, sure. a sense of privilege sure. viewed by education, by class, or by grouping that as that should have the energy, that should have the energy to change Nigeria and to bond together and coalesce together. And, we, and the church gives us that opportunity. The lower class that we always play is going to take 500 now on the election. It is a game of survival for such people. 500 naira might be nothing to you, but it's everything to them. So some sort of way, we have, and, and if it's Gandhi, or it's Mandela, or if it's Churchill, or it's uh, Lincoln, you know, the, 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 the pivotal leaders of, of spaces are people who had a bit of privilege and believe that they believe that that privilege must come for something. So that's why we have to step up and, and bound together and unite. And that's why someone asked a question about collaboration. This is the time that the church bounce together and says, this will be our standard of governance in Nigeria accountability, transparency, probity, integrity. Now, who is willing to commit to these principles? Then we are able to back you all the way. And that's the way I think it should be. Thank you.